and welcome to the end of 2016 and the first annual Plots and Point Book Awards. This most prestigious event is brought to you by a carefully selected academy of storytelling experts to award those books which have been the very best of 2016. Since this is the first time ever that these precious prizes have been given out, let me explain a bit about how it works. We have ten categories, with one winner for each. Those categories are the best male lead character, the best female lead character, best supporting cast, best film adaptation, best cover design, best author, best contemporary novel, best science fiction, best fantasy, and of course, the coveted book of the year. All the books that I read this year qualified for consideration in these awards, regardless of initial release date, etc. So without further ado, let's give out our first award. The nominees for Best Male Lead Character are... Bocho, from the Duelist Trilogy. Mark Watney, from The Martian. Geralt of Rivia, from The Witcher Saga. And Johnny Rico from Starship Troopers. And the winner is... Mark Watney from The Martian. <laughs> the strength of The Martian is the character of Mark Watney. He's a snarky, brilliant fountain of positive thinking and determination in a situation where it would be very easy to lose hope. Since The Martian is largely the story of one man alone on an entire planet, it was so important that that character work, because if he was an unlikable loser, I doubt the book would have been as dominant as it was. <laughs> oh yes, congratulations to Mark Watney, truly a worthy winner. Now, if you'll excuse us, a brief word from our sponsors. We, we don't have any sponsors. <sighs> Fine, moving on then. The nominees for Best Female Lead Character are Siri, The Witcher Saga Ash from The Haters Yvaine from Stardust and Kacha from The Duelist Trilogy And the winner is Kacha from The Duelist Trilogy Demonstrating how you can write a strong female character without making them an emotionless badass concerned only with being not like the other girls, Kutcher is a responsible, talented sword fighter slash assassin who also cares about looking after her boneheaded younger brother Vocho. As the series goes on, Kutcher gets an amazing amount of character development and she manages to hold her own in a genre that is more often than not a complete man's world. Congratulations to Kacha, a worthy winner of our award. Unfortunately, Kacha couldn't be here tonight to collect her award because... Well, she's not real. So let's move on. The next award is for the book that has the best supporting cast. And the nominees are... Last Night in Montreal by Emily St. John Mandel. The Tower of the Swallow by Andrzej Sapkowski, Swords and Scoundrels by Julia Knight, and Vicious by V.E. Schwab. And the winner is... Swords and Scoundrels by Julia Knight. I'm going to be completely honest, this one took me completely by surprise. Julia Knight has created a book and a trilogy that has truly fleshed out a group of characters that each of them are relatable, sympathetic and believable. By the end of the trilogy I found myself so attached to each of the characters and that really made the ending all the more nail-biting. Our next award goes to the Best Film Adaptation. The same rules apply as they have to the books that have been awarded so far. It doesn't have to have been released this year, but I have to have seen it this year. The nominees for Best Film Adaptation are... The Martian Nerve Me and Earl and the Dying Girl and The Virgin Suicides And the winner is... Nerve! (laughs) 
Loosely based on the book of the same name by Gian Ryan, Nerve wins this award not for being a faithful adaptation, but by taking the core concept of what made the book interesting and then changing everything about the book that was a bit naff. That being the characters and the plot and the writing. Is it the best film ever made? <laughs> no, no it's not. But it did what an adaptation should do, and that be its own thing, whilst keeping the spirit of the source material alive. That's how it should be done. For our next award, I consulted a professional art critic for their opinion, and here's what they had to say. Who are you? How did you get my number? If you call here again, I'm going to call the police. So with that in mind, I basically just picked the winner myself out of an old sock. The nominees for best cover art are... Angel Fall by Susan E. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. And Last Night in Montreal by Emily St. John Mandel. And Speak by Louisa Hall. And the winner is... Last Night in Montreal by Emily St. John Mandel. I love monochrome. <laughs> that was primarily the deciding factor in this award, but I also really like the silhouette art style of this cover and the dark fairy tale vibe it gives off. Basically, it wins because I said so. Come fight me! Come fight me! Our next award is for the best author. In order to limit the pool of writers to a reasonable amount, I have had to cut it down to authors that I read for the very first time this year. Otherwise, I would have to just pick my favourite author of all time, every time. The nominees for Best Author go to Julia Knight, The Duelist Trilogy, Jesse Andrews for Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, Ian M. Banks for The Player of Games, and Andy Weir for The Martian. And the winner is... Jesse Andrews for Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. <laughs> Breathing a little bit of life and energy into the YA contemporary genre, Jesse Andrews managed to deliver a one-two punch of great novels for me this year, with first of all his debut, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, and his follow-up, The Haters. What Andrews has really touched on is the reality of being a teenager. His characters are largely naive and suffer actual consequences for the stupid things that they do, which is a brilliant contrast to the unassailable philosopher poets found in other YA contemporary novels I've read. His books are hilarious and his sarcastic humour just hits all the right chords with me. For our next category, I have to sort of cheat a bit, because the definition of contemporary is ridiculous, and I barely read straight contemporary. For the purpose of this award, assume contemporary to mean set in the real world, regardless of the actual time period. The nominees are... The Virgin Suicides, Jeffrey Eugenides, Nerve by Gian Ryan, the Haters by Jesse Andrews, and Last Night in Montreal by Emily St. John Mandel. And the winner is... The Haters by Jesse Andrews. There is a huge glut of contemporary road trip books out there, but none of them have the same sense of humour and charm that The Haters does. Jesse Andrews has created a riotous and realistic portrayal of what it would be like to just run around the country trying to make it big in a band that is quite frankly awful. It's a great follow-up to his debut, and as the man himself says on his Goodreads review, this is the best second novel I've ever written. Next is my personal favourite award, the best sci-fi. There have been a lot of amazing sci-fi books out I've read this year, and so narrowing it down was very difficult. But the nominees for Best Sci-Fi are... The Player of Games by Ian M. Banks The Martian by Andy Weir Speak by Louisa Hall And Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick And the winner is... The Player of Games by Ian M. Banks 
What do you do when you live in a society where money doesn't matter and you have all the free time in the world? You become epic at board games, obviously. The Player of Games is an ingeniously imaginative sci-fi about how board games can save the universe, sort of. It's hard to sum up just what makes this book so special, but luckily for me, I control the editing so I can just escape the responsibility by cutting straight to the next award. <laughs> right I am, and our next award is sort of like the old grandad to the last one. The nominees for Best Fantasy are... Swords and Scoundrels by Julia Knight Stardust by Neil Gaiman The Tower of the Swallow by Andrzej Sapkowski and The City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. And the winner is... The Tower of the Swallow by Andrzej Sapkowski. <laughs> Being the latest novel in The Witcher Saga, I was just bound to love this book regardless. But Sapkowski really managed to raise his game for this one to make it worthy of this award anyway. The narrative is presented in a fresh way for the series, incorporating events from many different viewpoints, and the more I've grown to know these characters, the more the author is able to play around with their interactions, really leading to some truly memorable and brilliant moments. Well, here we are at last. All of our winners are well deserved, but much like the Highlander, when it comes to the best book, there can be only one. The nominees for Best Book of 2016 are... The Player of Games by Ian M. Banks Last Night in Montreal by Emily St. John Mandel The Tower of the Swallow by Andrzej Sapkowski and The Haters by Jesse Andrews And the winner is... Last Night in Montreal by Emily St. John Mandel It's so rare to find an author that you just seem to connect with, and that is a special and powerful gift. Last Night in Montreal is the story of young people trying to find their place in the world and coming to terms with what is really important to them. It's a haunting story that has stayed with me ever since I read it, and the author has conveyed the ideas in the book in such a beautiful and succinct way. I can't wait to dive into more of her writing and see what else she can do to stomp on my cold, dead, emotionless feelings. And that's it. All the awards are given out and... Hang on, what? What? Sorry, I've just been informed by the script uh, that there's actually a secret 11th award. This is really unorthodox, but yeah, sure, let's, let's just roll with it. 2017 is right around the corner and my TBR pile is staring at me. So, without further ado, the nominees for Most Anticipated Read are... The Rivers of London by Ben Aranovich, The Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski, The Singer's Gun by Emily St. John Mandel, and Hot Pterodactyl Boyfriend by Alan Cummin. What? Hot, hot pterodactyl, hot pterodactyl boyfriend. Well, that's the winner, isn't it? No, no, it is. That's the winner. Look at it. Look at it. Well, that wraps it up for the first annual Plots and Points Book Awards. Thank you to all of our wonderful winners. Thank you to me for taking the time to put on this spectacular show. And thank you to all of you for watching it. If you want to engage in some lively debate about my picks, then please leave a comment below. If you like this video and want to stay on top of all the wonderful content on its way in 2017, please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Hot pterodactyl fucking boyfriend. What the fuck is wrong with the world?